Hey guys, welcome. In this video, we are going to do a deep dive into PCF manifest file for fill template. So let's get started. Here I have created a control manifest file and then I've added all the properties that are available for us uh, for the fill template. When you first start, you get the manifest file with the control tag, the property tag, the resource tag, and the feature usage tag. When in the control tag, you already have the namespace populated for you when you initiate the project. And then you also have the co constructor populated for you as well. But what you don't have is the preview image. Now, if you are importing the solution in model driven app or canvas app, the component can show certain images and it's useful for the users to see certain images so that they know what your control will be doing. And this is a nice way of putting the preview image. Now, when you put the preview image, the path is relative to your folder location. So in this case, if you go to the folder location, you can see that I have an image folder and then I have a preview.png image file in it. And that's the location I'm giving here. Then is the version. This version can be incremented as you proceed with developing your control. Next is display name key. This is the name of your control that will be displayed to the user. So something that is familiar or something that is user friendly names are recommended so that user knows what your control will be doing. Next is the description key. This description key helps user to know more about your control, what it's gonna do uh, in detail explanation of how your control will be working, what it would be doing and etc. Next is control type. Now this, when you initiate the uh, PCF control, it comes as standard and you don't have to change this. So you don't really have to look into the control type. Let's move on to the next tag, that is the property tag. Property tag is something that is a configurable piece of data that your component is expecting from model-driven app or from Canvas app. Normally, the first property that you would put, you would be binding it to an attribute if the usage type is bond, which we will be looking in a few minutes. So you can have Addition, multiple properties. Properties have several attributes and one of the attribute is name. Name is something that you would be using in your code and does not necessarily will be displayed to the user. That's why you cannot have spaces in the name. Then is a display name key. Now this is something that will be displayed to the user. So it has to be a friendly name. It can contain spaces in it and it has to be uh, short and sweet so that user understand what this property is going to do but if you want to do if you want to give more explanation about that property then you have the de description key at attribute that would define more about that property what that property is going to do followed by description key is of type attribute of type attribute will contain the data type that particular property will support. So there are several different data types that are available for you to use and you can define what this property's data type would be. Following are the data types that you can use today to create your custom controls. Now, as you can see, there's something called as multiple and also single line text area. The difference between the single line text area and multiple is that the text area only allows up to 4,000 characters. So if you want to capture anything more than 4,000 characters, then the best way to capture those uh, that data would be using the multiple data type. Now going back to our control manifest file. Now let's say you have a scenario where you want to support multiple data types. So in that case, what you have is 
instead of using of type you would use of type group and of type group would have a name and this name would come from type group tag type group tag has an attribute name and that name is equivalent to whatever the of type group name you give type group tag has child elements and those child elements are type tag and the type tag would be the name of your attribute we saw earlier now for the canvas app there is a limitation and the limitation is that the type group should have compatible data types types that are considered compatible are string are categorized into strings numbers and dates so if you want to create a type group then you can create a type group of all the strings or some of the string elements so that's what is shown on the screen right now uh, if you're creating a type group for strings then you can create type group for any of the data types that are involved in strings you cannot combine strings and numbers or strings or dates so whenever you create a type group for canvas app then it has to be within this groups then the next attribute is usage usage has two values bound and input if it's bound that means you have to bind that property to an attribute in the model driven app if it's input that means you get a free text box where you can enter whatever values you want so for example let's say you want to capture a subscription key or a api key so the subscription or api key then be, then has a usage of input whereas because the data is not stored in crm you are going to input the data while you con configure your control whereas if it is bound and say you want to bind that control to a first name or last name then and those attributes exist in the cds application so you can bind this property to those attributes if the usage is bound required as the name suggests are true false so if it is true that means it is required if it is false that means it is optional the next one is the default value now sometimes if use if you have uh, if you have a property that is not required then you want to give a default value to it so for example let's say i have last name but last name is optional so i would say last name is xyz and that becomes my default value i can compare this value um in in my code and then see if if it is a default value i can take certain actions if it is not a default value i can do uh, a different action now those are all the attributes that are available on the property tag the next tag that we want to see is the resource tag resources tag has multiple tags underneath it multiple child tags and every tag is different so it has code it has css then it has the resx file image tag and html tag the first one is the code tag that we're going to look at the code tag has two attributes path and order path is the relative path of your code file that is your index file in your folder structure so if i open up my folder structure you would see my index file is is on the root level so that's why i'm just giving index.ts and i'm ordering it as the first file right moving on we have css tag css tag also has two attributes path and order again the path has to be relative so if you have a folder structure created in your uh, project then you can see that i have created css folder and then underneath css folder i have my css file called as field type manifest so similarly you can see here when i defined my path it's relative so it has css 
forward slash field type manifest.css. Then is my resx file. Resx tag is um, is localization tag. So if you have any resx file, then you can put it in resx tag. For this, again, the, there's path and then there's version. So path again is relative path. So as you can see, I have strings folder underneath my project and then underneath strings folder, I have two files, one for uh, US English and then one for uh, French. And then these files are XML files. So you can have root, then you have data and then you have the field or attribute names or whatever you wanna put that in and then you have the value, what value would it be? So in case of English, it's this is a great place to learn, but in case of French, it is the French um, translation of whatever is in the English. Then is the image tag. Image tag only has one attribute that is the path. And then again, that is the relative path of your folder structure. So I have image IMG folder, and then underneath IMG folder, I have default.png. So that's how my images um, are assigned. And then I have HTML tag. HTML tag again has the same thing, two attributes, path and order. And then path is the relative path of the HTML element. So th that's all in the resources tag. Now, next is feature usage. Feature tag has child tags called as uses feature. Uses features defines what features your component is gonna be using. There are eight features available for you. And then uses feature has two attributes, name and required. Name is the name of your feature and required defines if it is required by your component or not. So it, it's a true or false value. Now, if any of your, if any feature is not required by your component, you can certainly remove those features. If you do not need any of the user's features, for example, like you don't need any of this, then you can eliminate the feature usage tag altogether. So you won't have anything in this. And that's all that we have in control manifest file. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, then leave a comment below.